here in London. So. It took about, uh, about a month to kind of get all the major kinks out of, uh, of seeing changing users' experience and making sure it kind of worked with all the routers and all the different and all the different sort of networking things and, and major bugs where we were ready to finally let the world know jump routers existed and we were around. So it was only just a short six weeks ago where we finally released the global press release and officially, officially launched the game. Now, you may be looking at this timeline and you'll notice that it's only been just a little over a year since our idea popped into our heads till, till launch happened, which is significantly less than most next-gen and larger games. So let's talk about the good. What's, what are the good stuff that happened? during pre-launch. Well, one really important thing is, is that uh, the three founders had a unified vision. The first day at the office, we went in and we sat down and we, and we talked amongst themselves and defined with short words exactly what Antic Entertainment and Jump Battles was going to be, uh, be about. The first thing, the game's got to be fun. I think that's a bit of a no-brainer, but to be honest, You'd be surprised how, when you kind of get into the thick of things, it's, it's, it's easy to forget sometimes. We wanted to stretch our creative muscles. We wanted to make, and with that, we wanted to make something that was original. We want to keep antics small. We like the idea of having an intimate group of, of ninjas, of people who are excellent programmers and excellent animators and excellent artists excellent writers, etc., etc., to be able to, to create, have almost like a think tank to be able to, to nurture and create new and original game design ideas. And given that the three of us are quite, are, are quite passionate about uh, outsourcing, therefore, if we ever needed any extra help, we could just outsource all of that. Another thing that it was important to mention is that we wanted to focus on hardcore games. And what that essentially means is, due to the fact that we ourselves, we all consider ourselves to be hardcore gamers, we are uh, people who loved, grew up on Final Fantasy and and Mario and Sega Genesis and finally id Software's games and Quake, etc., etc. Those are the type of games that we wanted to create. We wanted to have that intense, fun experience, which meant we weren't going to make anything for Grandma, unfortunately. However, the, the spin that we wanted to focus on is that these hardcore games, this hardcore experience, we wanted to bring to the casual player. And I don't mean to sort of shoehorn an, an, an image of what a casual player is, but these, all these people, all of you guys here, who grew up on the Nintendo and the Segas and, and the 486s and everything, Everyone here still loves to play those games, but we all have lives. We all, as much as sometimes we definitely want to sit down and spend an evening playing the, the, the next great game that we've either bought or rented from Blockbuster, and that's awesome, and I love to do that too. But sometimes you only want to spend, you know, two minutes here, five minutes there, and we are a strong believer that we can get the same amount of fun and satisfaction and amusement from those small pieces of time, rather than spending a lot of time. So, we took all these things, and uh, we essentially made them as our commandments. Now, this of course is more of an artist rendition. We of course don't have two stone placards up on our office with like the giant Roman numerals. In fact, those words that we've defined are just simply post-it notes stuck on our whiteboard. And if you walk into Antic's office, they are still there. So, they proved to be a reminder of making sure that we don't deviate from this vision that we have. And if there's ever any sort of doubt, we sit back and talk about it and see whether or not what we want to do fits or deviates from that vision. And having this vision has really helped focus and narrow exactly what, it, what we wanted to do with Junk Files. Secondly, the uh, one really good thing which I would like to talk about is the battle system. Now, it's kind of hard to depict here with screenshots, but I will do my best. 
The, the thing that we really, really wanted to do originally, because the web space is a very new web, a, a new domain for many of us, we wanted to do an experiment. We wanted to see how quickly can we make a really fun game in the minimal amount of time and how it to see how profitable it will be. So we started talking about making our customizable vehicle battle game as a spreadsheet game. And what I mean by that is you may have heard of games like Gladiators, Earth uh, 2150, I believe is another one, and uh, Duels. And these are web browser games that are heavily based on stats where you do customize your Roman warrior or your mech or what have you. And then you hit a button, and somewhere on the server, a dice is rolled, and it says, you win, or you lose. And that's the extent of the experience. So we started writing this, something similar with Junk Battles, and then we realized that this wasn't going to cut it. We really wanted to make something that was going to be fun in the way that we wanted we wanted to ex experience the same stuff that we experienced on the consoles and on our and, and on computers. So, what we decided to do is we started to look back to our classical games that we grew up and loved. One huge game that myself and Jeff Evans, our creative director, was Final Fantasy. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Final Fantasy and the, the RPG aspects of it, but specifically, I'm talking about the battle system where it is, it's been a tried and true formula that has been copied dozens and dozens of times over, over decades now. Yeah, it's that old, it's been 25 years old now. And we wanted to take that concept of being able to have actions, of being able to attack and defend and repair and things like that. And we wanted to, we wanted to do that. We wanted to leverage that sort of experience. But we, we didn't want to just, oh, we copy it. So, what to do, what to do, what to do. Well, a big game nowadays, and I'm a huge fan of it, is Guitar Hero. And what we ended up sort of doing is amalgamating the two concepts together. And the funny thing is, is that it kind of happened by accident, because we were, we were leaning towards the real-time aspect of the game, but the internet is just, such a, is just such an unpredictable beast that we felt that by adding in a track system, something very similar to Guitar Hero, that we could leverage the fact, or I should say uh, circumvent the fact is a better word, of the fact that things can be late -tuned. So even if you have a crappy connection, you can still play your game. And essentially how this works is that if you look at the screenshot here on, up above, there are two tracks. There's a red one and a blue one. And each track represents your the command queue or your plan command attacks of your game, of your battle. So I have this like souped up golf cart thing with giant treads and the other opponent has this wagon wheels uh, station wagon here. And the idea is, is that you drop commands onto the queue, whether it's attack, defend, etc, etc, given the fact of the like, these are a collective, collective based on the parts that you have. And 10 seconds later, they execute. Now, 10 seconds does sound like a long time, but when you experience the game, you realize that there's a lot of stuff going on, and there is a lot of stuff to kind of be stressed about. And that's a good stress. I'm talking about an intense depth amount of strategy of, I've done this, he's done that. How should I counter what he's done, et cetera, et cetera. And it ends up becoming really, really fun. So, and the best part about all of this is that our typical battles last about 90 seconds to two minutes on average. So, you can have a fairly intense action, Twitch-based experience in your web browser game. 